You're watching Destiny Church. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. Lord, it is our, our prayer tonight so that indeed we will get to know you more. That we will know your heart, Lord God. Lord, as, as that song was declaring, Lord, Lord, we realize that we can, we can only show you to the world to the level of how much we know you, of how much we understand your heart. So first of all, tonight, Lord God, we, we ask forgiveness, Lord. As a church, we ask forgiveness for uh, so many times that we have not represented you for who you really are. And Lord, as a result, Lord God, the world has, has not known you, Lord. the God that you're, that, that you're supposed to be known. And so tonight, Lord God, we cry indeed that prayer, Lord, more of you. Lord, more of you, more of you, God. Lord, we know that, that Lord, the church has fallen short, oh God, of, of of representing you, of showing, Lord God, your love, Lord. And so we, we pray and we cry out, Lord God, you need more of you. Change us, God. Change us to become more like you. Lord, show us what it means to be righteous, not self-righteous. Show us what it means to be holy, Show us what it means, Lord God, to, to be a light, Lord. Show us what it means, Lord God, to be a refuge, Lord God, for the hurting of the world. Show us, Lord God, show us your strength so that, Lord, we may be a strength, Lord God, an encouragement for those who are weary and tired. Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If if you are standing, uh, you can take your seats now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our last night of our uh, week of fire. Okay. And. Uh, you know, yung, yung song that we have just been singing, no? If, if, if you try to, you know, understand what, the, what that song is really trying to say, what basically it is declaring is that, you know, to the level that we know God is to the level that we can, you know, we can reveal Him to the world. I mean, that is how, I realize ko lang, no? that is how important and vital it is to, to basically know God, you know, because okay, our, our knowledge of God, our walk with God would dictate you know, in terms of how much we can reveal or how much of God we can show to the world. Okay, uh, tonight, I would like to focus more on, on knowing Christ and making Him known. Okay. I want us to read John chapter 17. We have been, we have been examining this verse no, on set of uh, this week of fire. In fact, we are declaring that this is going to be you know, uh, uh, 
no our our statement no not just for this year but uh, no as we revisit God's purpose for the church God's mission for our lives no we understand that basically it is summed up in in this statement no to know Christ to know God and make him known no parang every effort everything that we do should be directed towards that that is no parang that is basically the whole purpose of of our lives here in this world no to know Christ and make him known eh, in John chapter 17 no we can see clearly why no that is a fact that wh- why why is it that all our efforts all our energy all our endeavors no whether whether we are you know working in the corporate world or or studying no getting married having families raising children it is it is all about that 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 two pronged purpose no to know Christ and make him known and basically we can see that from John chapter 17 verses 3 verses 3 to 4 and then verse 6 okay and this is what Jesus declares no and this is eternal life i'm reading from the NASB version of the bible and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Wow, isn't that interesting? Isn't that fascinating? No, sometimes when you think about eternal life, yung nakadalasan, we think of it as you know, going to heaven okay, or, or immortality. But apparently, there's more to eternal life than just, you know, than just uh, not dying or, or just, you know, than just living forever and ever. Okay, of course, you know, as a human being, deep inside of us, we want that. We, we, you know, there's a part in us that uh, longs for eternity. Well, because that is how God designed us to be. You know, in, in the Song of Songs, sabi dun that God has placed eternity in the hearts of man. That's why one thing that you cannot deny as a human being, even, even if you don't even believe in God, you know, it's the fact that you know, we, want to, we want to be remembered. We want our names to be... No, to be etched no, into eternity. Ayaw nating makalimutan. That's why, kung mapansin nyo nga, in our own uh, futile way, our own, uh, uh, what's this? Our own way of somehow trying to preserve our names, trying to preserve our memory, what do we do? No, we name buildings, streets, after people. People that, have, that has died in memory of them. No? Even yung mga taong sabihin natin, hindi naman ganun kasikat. Bakit ka... Bakit ka naglalagay ng lapida? No? With, with your name etched on stone because somehow deep inside, no? Yung nga, you, you, you want to be remembered. Why? Because that is the truth about who you are. You are an eternal being. Okay? That's, that's God's design. Unfortunately for us, sin came. And we know what sin does to humanity. No, Romans 6.23, sabi doon, no, for the wages of sin is death. And that's the reason that despite this longing for eternity and, and, and you know, living life to the fullest, it's, it's tragic. No? You know, probably the greatest tragedy to beset humanity is sin and the thought of what? Dying. You know, you know, why, you know this, this whole situation that, we're, that, is, that we are experiencing right now, if you think about it, it's not just about COVID-19. Why are, why are we on a lockdown? Why are we doing a lot of online things? Why, are on we, why is the whole world on a quarantine? It's not just because of COVID-19. It's because COVID-19 is, you know, it's deadly. You don't want to die. As people, we don't want to die. But then, you know, there, there's more to eternal life than just not dying. No, sabi dito ni Jesus, and this is eternal life. What is that? That they may know you. The only true God. It is when you discover God. It is when you walk in, in a deep knowing with Him. Sabi ko nga yung knowing dito, there is that certainty. There is that assurance. It's not just a knowledge about something. No, but but it's a deep knowing, an intimate knowing, no, a personal knowing. It's a it's an experiential knowledge rather than just a theory. God, 
does not just want to be a theory in your mind. He no, he is a God that you no know, wants to wants to be experienced, want to walk with us. Kaya nga, Jesus Christ, in His coming, He was named Emmanuel, the God who is with us. No, the God who can feel us and touch us and, and no, who, who felt our pains and our hunger and, 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 our, no, and, and all the senses that are known to us as human beings. No, so sabi dito, this is life eternal that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Verse 4, I have glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you have given me to do. Now, apparently, see si Jesus understood no, that uh, he has this, uh, his assignment from God. And what is that? No, sabi niya dito, no, that, that, no, he talks about accomplishing this. And what is that? We find that, that no, purpose in verse 6. I have revealed your name to them whom you have given whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have followed your word. Jesus' purpose was to reveal the Father, was to reveal God, was to make God known. Okay? Interesting. No, and that's why, no, that is, no, that's why I believe that everything that we do in this life is about knowing God in making him known. No, kaya pala even si, ano, si, si Paul. No, look at this. Romans chapter 9, verse 1 to 3. I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people those of my own race. What is Paul trying to say here? No, he understands. He, he, he is thankful that God has saved him. No, that, that he has come to know Christ and that his life was changed. You understand, for those of you who are not familiar with, with Paul, no, prior, who, prior to him becoming the Apostle Paul, he was Saul, what? The great persecutor of the church, no, a, a murderer. Okay, and, and that's that's the kind of life that he is. That's why sabi nga ni Paul, no, I am the chief of sinners. Like he really considered himself, pag tinignan niya sa niya, na riyas, napakasaman tao niya. And yet, by the grace of God, no, he was rescued. He was set free. He came to know the truth. No, and and in as much as he, I in, in as much as that there was. I believe a great joy in his life that he knows Christ. Sabi niya nga sa Philippians, no? No, I count all things are as garbage, no? yung mga accomplishments in the world. We talked about that yesterday. No? Sabi niya, I, I, I count all those things are as garbage compared to the knowledge of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Apparently for him, nothing compares. No, not, not the greatest accomplishments in the world can compare to that knowing of, of God and knowing Christ. And yet here, there was one thing that pains him. And what is that? Sabi niya, no, hindi, ko, hindi, ko i, i, no, hindi ko itatago sa inyo to. Sabi, I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it. You can eat, no, the Holy Spirit is witness. He even said, no, God is witness to this. God knows my heart. I have great sorrow. No? And unceasing anguish in my heart. And what is the reason for that, Sabi? For I wish, I, I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, for the sake of my own race. W- what is this? Nung sobrang, sobrang tindi nung bigat sa puso ni Paul, that despite the fact that he was, he saved, hindi niya malubos maisip na yung mga tao, yung mga Jews, yung mga kababayan niya, hindi nakakakilala kay Lord. And that's why he set out on that one passion. No, sabi niya nga at one point, in another verse, sabi niya, I think in Corinthians, sabi niya, the love of God compels me. No, why he keeps on doing these things? Why does he keep on preaching the gospel? Telling people of the good news because of that love that he experienced. And if there's, no, and if there's a sorrow that he experiences, it's because he finds it hard. No, parang sabi niya, sana nga, ako na lang ang, no, 
kay ma- parang ganito yan eh. No, na, 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 nakita na ba kayo ng isang magulang na for example, nagkasakit ang anak to the point na hindi niya matulungan and, and really he's wishing, sana ako na lang, sana ako na lang. And, and that, that's a reality. And this is what Paul is saying, Sa, sana ako na lang. I always that I myself be accursed. And, and grabe yung passion ni Paul for people who are lost. Particularly for, for his own for his own ano, own race, no, the Jews. Clearly, Paul is committed to these two things as well. The commitments of Jesus no, to know God, to reveal God, and to make Him known. Now, the question is, as a believer, as a church, paano nga ba? There's no question already. We are to know Him. Pinaliwanag ko na yan. Over the last couple of days, even Pastor Sandy and Junwell already shared about no, how we can know God and follow hard after God and know God and His Word. Now, the question now lies is, okay, no, we are to know Him. But the question is, how can we make Him known? How can we make Him known? First, number one, you can only make known of Christ to the level that you know Him. Let me repeat that. You can only make known of Christ. You can only reveal Christ to others to the level of how much you know Him. Narealize ko, ganun, ganun pala kahalaga yung implications nun in terms of, uh, of telling people about God. I mean, check this out. No? A faulty view of God would cause the church, would cause you to reveal to people, to reveal to the world a faulty view of Him. If you see God as a, yun nga, as a hard God, as a God who is unmerciful, as a God... I, I don't know who is condemning. Is it even possible that so many times no, the church is seen to be a church that keeps on condemning others? Yun nga, may pagka self-righteous tayo, niyabang natin na parang no, na parang no, tayo lang yung magaling. And, and na-realize ko, it's probably because we have a faulty view of, of, of God. Okay? Yun nga, you, you can only make known of Christ to the level that you know Him. It, it's, it's something like this, no? And for those of you who have watched, for example, a movie and that, that you liked it so much, no? understand this, and then okay, you, you begin to share it to others to the level of how much you actually know about the movie. Okay? Hindi mo kayang i-share, hindi mo kayang ikwento yung hindi mo alam. Hindi mo kayang ituro yung hindi mo alam, di ba? No? Bago ako nyari magturo ng isang bagay, no? dapat muna alam mo eh. Na kung nyari mali, ito problema, pag mali yung alam mo, mali yung turo mo. Kaya napakahalaga na kilala natin ng Diyos. We know His character, we know His attributes, we know who He is. That's why we have to pursue Him. Okay? So, where do we start? You know, we have to know God's heart. No, why, why are we to make Him known? Does God want to be known? Yes. In what way? What is His heart for people? What is His heart for the world? How does God see people? No, because, the, and, and I think, ito mahalagay, no? we can only see people the way that we understand how God sees people. No, if, if, if you think of God, if you see God as a God who just you know, wants to punish people for, for their sins, then that's the kind of quote-unquote gospel that we will bring to the world. It's a harsh gospel. It's a condemning gospel. You no, know, It's a gospel that, that people would try to shy away from and, and reject. Okay? But then, sino nga si God? 
no and then the bible re- reveals no a number of his character in terms of how he treats the lost number one. sino nga ba si god god loves everyone and desires that everyone that means all no i want you to think about that all people to come to the knowledge of truth and be saved god is isn't god's love is for everyone not just for a select few and i would like to show to you that no biblically scripturally yung puso ng dios no 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 says sabi ni si Paul was writing to his spiritual son kay Timothy sabi niya Timothy I urge you then first of all that petitions prayers intercessions and thanksgiving be made for look at that all people not just to select you sabi niya kay Timothy Timothy pray pray No, make petition to God. Pray for people. Intercede, no, for all people. And then, he, in fact, he makes it more specific. Sabi niya, for kings. And in other words, no, for for political leaders, no, for no, for those who are in authority, that we may live. It, 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 when you pray for when you pray for our leaders, our, our leaders in the government. When you pray for your boss, something happens, no, eh, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And sabi dito ni, ni Paul, and this is good and pleases God our Savior. Verse 4, who wants all people, I want to highlight that. No, I don't want you to miss that word, who wants all. No, who wants everyone. God. Sometimes tayo kasi yun, there's a tendency for us to be Let's face it, yung, yung human side natin. We play favorites. We we only want to select the few people that we like. But God isn't like that. No, God is a God of love. You know, John 3:16, for God so loved the world. And what does that mean? He loves your classmates, he loves your mom, your dad, your cousins. He loves your boss, he loves no, he loves everyone. And you know what God desires? You, you may not like the president. You may not like some politicians. I'm, and I have to admit, I, I don't like some people. But as far as God's love is concerned, He wants all to be saved. He wants all to be saved. I, I, I don't have to vote for the person that you want me to vote for. But one, and then we don't even have to agree on that. But what is clearly in the Bible is that He wants all people to be saved. And I want you to see God's heart in that. Nung sabi dito, and come to the knowledge of truth. No, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. This time Peter, no, the apostle, writes this. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Well, what is the context of this? No, uh, Peter was talking about yung, yung last days. No, why, why, why is God not bringing judgment yet to the wicked? Or why does... I'm, nisip ko nga yun nga eh, no? God is a just God. True. He is a just God. He will not let sin go unpunished. But together with this quality of being just is that he is a you know a, a, no a a loving God. No, he desires everyone to be saved. And sabi dito ni, ni Peter, it's not that no God is delaying things. Eh, minsan iniisip natin no, no parang hindi yata just si Lord. But you know what what sabi dito ni Paul no and ni Peter, okay? He is patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish. Eh? He is patient with you, not wanting everyone. Sabi, again, take note of that, 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 that one word there. Everyone. He doesn't want everyone to perish. Eh? 
In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18 to 19, sabi dito, All this is from God, who reconciled us to Himself to Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to Himself. Again, look at this. God was reconciling what? To whom? Okay. The world. Not just a select few. And that's why I would like to put this on record. No? I, I don't believe in, in limited atonement. Some, no, some believers would claim, some Christians would claim that Christ only died for a few. And that He has already, yung, yung salvation ni Jesus, that, that, he has, that He came to do is only limited for select people. Eh, nisip ko nga, you know, how ironic that the same people who claim to be saved by grace, no, by grace supposedly, by grace alone, and not by their works, eh, no, thus, parang they take on, oh, I'm, I'm saved by grace alone, it's not by what I did. So parang, it seems that they take on that appearance of being humble. No, hindi, hindi naman, there's nothing... There's nothing special about me. There's nothing that I have done that I deserve this. I'm only saved by grace. And, and there's truth to that, that we are all saved by grace alone. But then it's crazy because they believe. No? And somehow, they will not say this, but in a way, take pride in the idea that they've been chosen. Na para sa kanila lang. Parang ganito yun eh. Malas mo, di ka save. Suwerte ko. Pinili ako. Pero by grace, ha? wala sa akin yun. Like, that, that's weird. Parang, parang you're, you're telling everyone, malas nyo lang, God didn't choose you. Ako, I don't know. There's nothing really in me, but He chose me by grace. Hey, I just read verses in the Bible that God wants everyone to come to the knowledge of truth. That is the heart of God. God doesn't leave anyone outside of His grace. So, napakahalaga that we, we, we have that right in our mind that, that yun nga eh, si God, mahal niya lahat. Gusto niya makakilala lahat. Gusto niya gusto ma, no, makakilala sa katotohanan ng lahat. Because that is His heart. Number two, what is the character of God? Who is God? No, these are just some of the things that we need to look into. God is not just only a God of love who desires all men, everyone to be saved, to come to the knowledge of truth. God is also what? A merciful God. A forgiving God. I think one of the greatest graces that God offers humanity is what? To know that God is a forgiving God. Diba? It, it means that He doesn't hold sin against us. That there is a grace called forgiveness to Christ. No, yun yung character ni God. No, kahit nga sa, sa Old Testament, He tries to reveal and shows that He is a merciful God. No, maawa ang Diyos. No, merciful. No, look at Psalms 103, verse 7 to 12. He revealed His character to Moses and His deeds to the people of Israel. Okay. Verse 8, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to, ang- no, slow to get angry, filled with unfailing love. Even in the Old Testament, this is how God was revealing Himself no, to the nation of Israel. Who what? Who so many times, no, talagang... Okay, antigas ng ulo, kept on disobeying God, rebelling against God, and yet, no, hindi, no, hindi napapagod yung mercies ng Lord, hindi na uubos, despite, ah, naku, ang kulit ng Israel. And yun, bakit pinakita doon yun sa, sa Old Testament? Kasi pinapakita na despite ang kakulit, kakulitan natin, kakulitan mo, despite ng marami mong pagkukulang, hindi na uubos. And yun yung kailangan maipakita, eh, yun, we need to know that. Because unless we know that of God and His mercy and His compassion, no, then we can never show that mercy and compassion to the world. No, you know, we will end up showing a God to be a hard God, uh, an exacting God. Uh, no? and, and, and we will be totally misrepresenting God. 
No, sabi dito, he will not constantly accuse. Imagine this. He will not constantly accuse nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. Can you imagine if God would just simply punish us for all our sins? But He is not like that. He is not like that. Okay? He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. God is not a harsh God. And you know what, honestly, ako, I, I need to know more of God. No, for, for, no, yung, yung character niya. Eh? Because, you know, to the level that we know God and experience Him is to the level that we will reflect Him. No, and then, I was just looking at my life, no, I, I see so many times that I'm still harsh and 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 sometimes unmerciful parang ganun no? but 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 then when i see god as a merciful and forgiving god then i cannot help but but show that 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 mercy and i ask god to change me you know? and this is of course there is no better revelation of god than when jesus christ came in the flesh you know, the word no the word that was in the beginning okay, became flesh and dwelt among us. Here is a, a, uh, no, a, a, a living manifestation, God in the flesh. And, and we see it not only in the words of Christ, but how He dealt with people. No, one such, one such ano, uh, parang ano, uh, event that shows us God's character or Christ no, living out this character of God can be seen in John chapter 8 verse 3 to 11 no, John chapter 8 verse 3 to 11 you know this story no? as he was speaking the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery they put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. Okay? And they were trying to trap him into saying something that could be used against him. But Jesus stooped down, rode into the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood again, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and rode in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't, ever, didn't even one condemn you? Verse 11, I will know, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I go and sin no more. This is, this is probably one of the most beautiful things that we can see in the life of God manifesting, Jesus manifesting mercy and forgiveness. This woman, even according to the law, the law that God provided, this woman deserved to be stoned. He deserved to be killed. He was literally caught in the act. And he was, you know, he was dragged in the public square everyone you can just imagine everyone in the whole town was there and they were ready because you no know, even in even the world god says that that he deserves to die and that's what the that's what you know the pharisees and the people of the now check this out the religious people okay? the religious people wanted to stone her and they were egging Jesus to you know, give the verdict. And Jesus was silent, just kept on writing. Sabi nung iba, no, it, it was, you know, some people assume, some theologians assume that Jesus started writing sins on the ground. And at first, the people didn't get it. Like, what is he doing? Writing things on the ground. And then sabi niya, ineg pa niya, what are we gonna do, Jesus? Huh? The Bible, te- I mean, the Word of God tells us, the Scriptures tell us. 
And then this is what Jesus says. Whoever has no sin, cast the first stone. And then he kept on writing again. And sabi dito, interestingly, people started to slip away from the oldest to the youngest. Bakit nga ba oldest to the youngest? Apparently, I guess the older people committed more sins because they're already old. <laughs> they have done more things and, and the, the younger people, they committed less, no? but eventually they realized that they have sinned as well and until, sabi dito, yung ano na lang, yung babae na lang nandun. But you know what? I, I like the ad, that there's something here, though. The woman didn't try to slip away as well. And, and just, just on a note, I think this is a picture of one who is truly repentant. He didn't even bargain with Jesus to lessen the judge. She knew what she deserved. She didn't try to get away from it. He, she stayed there. She didn't try to escape the judgment that she knew that she deserved. She was willing to take responsibility. In fact, th- check this out. I think she was really willing to be stoned. She knew that if there's someone who can stone her, it was Jesus. But she did not. She did not leave. And that, my friend, I think is a picture of true repentance, no? When you don't try to get away from the responsibility of your wrongdoing. And thus, forgiveness was bestowed upon her. Sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, neither do I condemn you. And that's the character of Jesus, no? In, in Luke chapter 5, verse 20, when Jesus saw their faith, He said, friend, your sins are forgiven. And, and this, is the, this is the story. I don't have time to discuss this, but this is the story of, of the man who was paralyzed and his friends brought him to Jesus. And Jesus told the man, no, friend, your sins are forgiven. Well, apparently, some of the people, no, like, sabi, who, who did, sino nga ba tong taong to that thinks he can forgive sin? And sabi ni Jesus sa kanila, what, this, what do you think is easier? Rise up and walk or your sins are forgiven. And sabi niya, to show you that the, the Son of Man has power to forgive sins, kinuman niya yung tao, rise up and walk, and the man rose up and walked. Now, there's something there. No, bakit sinabi ni Jesus, your sins are forgiven? Somehow, this is what I, 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 I realized, no? What was holding back that person? Yung, what was kept that person immobile? No, paralyzed. You know, when you talk about being paralyzed, you know, you cannot move. And apparently, it's not just physical movement that paralyzes a person. There are people who are you know, spiritually paralyzed. They're paralyzed by fears, paralyzed by their past, paralyzed by their wrongdoing, paralyzed by a, a feeling of condemnation. And I don't know, I think, that, you know, somehow this man... No, the main reason that he was not able to move that, that somehow yung, yung, ano niya, yung, yung sin niya manifested into that sickness that was holding him back for the longest time and what was going to set him free check this out was to know that his sins are not being held against him and what a beautiful thing no, for, for that man to hear knowing that he is forgiven. God forgiving him. God not holding his sin against him. He was now free from whatever it is that was keeping him in bondage, keeping him immobile, keeping him paralyzed. Oh, now that he could really be, you no, know, Jesus told him, rise up and walk is equivalent to your sins are forgiven. You're free. You can do whatever you want. And you know, that is, that is Jesus. That's the character of God. God wants us to be free for who we are. You know, free to love Him. Free to, you know, to be. You know, that, that is life. That is eternal life. And, and that's the character of God. God is a merciful and forgiving God. 
No, in, in Luke chapter 7 verse 47 to 48, no, this time sabi naman ni Jesus doon sa woman eh, with with an issue of blood, I tell you, you know, her sins. Oh no, no. He was talking about this time the uh, the the woman who broke the alabaster jar. No? And, and, and this is what Jesus tells of that woman. I tell you her sins. And they are many. Sino dito maraming kasalanan? <laughs> they are many, Jesus says, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who has forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. And we can go, in, go on and on, examine the God who forgives. You know, the parable of the prodigal son that despite yung kahihiyang idinulot ng prodigal son dun sa kanyang ama, no, still uh, the father waited patiently no, every day for his son to come back. And when his son did come back, guess what? No, I, yun nga na-realize ko, the father didn't forgive his son. When he came back, he even forgave him even before he came back. Isn't that amazing? And we need to understand that that is our God. No, our God forgives. Our God is a forgiving God. Our God is a loving God. His mercies, no, don't run out. Okay? His mercies are unfailing. Okay? Kaya sabi ni, you know, si, si Jeremiah, he wrote this in the lamentation, sabi niya, they are new every morning for those of you feeling condemned and, and feeling that you cannot go back to God anymore. Let that revelation come to you. His mercies are new every day, every morning. Number three, sino ba si God? God is a God of refuge. Karina, we were, we were singing that, no? Okay. No, the God I know, uh, okay. Uh, the God I know, ma- ma- ano? a tower of refuge. No, a God, the God I know, a tower of refuge. And, and when you, when you, st- and what, what does that mean? When, when do you take refuge? No, when you feel unsafe from from the world, when you feel unsafe from the things that are happening around you, you know, you can run to God. No, refuge. No. A, a refuge is a place where you feel safe. And it's sad because so many times, you know, the church doesn't reflect that character of God. The church is a place where people feel unsafe and pe- people feel annoying. And, okay, people feel that they cannot be themselves. And then, And I feel bad that, that we have represented God in a wrong way that people cannot come to Him. Psalm 46 verse 1, God is a refuge and our strength, a very present help. You know, a very present help in time of trouble. In other words, no, no, pag dapat sana, sana makilala ng mundo na ang Diyos natin is if ever they come into trouble, no, the first thing that they can run to is not, no, it's not money, it's not, it's not even their friends, it's, it's, it's God, it's, it's the church. I pray that we'll be able to present God that way. That the church will really be seen as a place of refuge, a place that they can run to when they are in trouble because that is God that is the heart of God that's what how God wants to be known that I'm here I'm ready to help I'm ready to forgive I'm ready to you know, I'm ready to strengthen you right when do you need refuge when do you need help when you're feeling weak you know, when you're feeling down and out and trouble you know, kaya may tatakbuhan ka and you know, siya sabi ng Lord, I am a God, a God of refuge, a tower of refuge. Psalm 91 verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress. No, when you are in a fortress, you feel not only safe, you feel secure. You know, someone's going to defend you, someone's going to fight for you. That, that's God. That's God. He will not allow you to be hurt. 
And we, we need to have that understanding of God so that we can show that kind of God in our lives. You know, in Psalm 34 verse 18, sabi niya, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. You know, you know, I'm, hey, when you're brokenhearted, no, God is the, is the person you run to. And this is clearly manifested in Jesus. No, in Isaiah 42 verse 3, sabi dyan, a, ver- a bruised reed he will not break. Talking about Jesus, a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. And what does this mean? It reveals the character, no? Na si Jesus daw, not, not even... I mean, a reed, sabi, a, a grass, no? A, a, a reed is a, a river grass. No? It's just a grass. You know how grass are very fragile. I mean, they can easily be broken. Yung talahe mo, yung, yung damo, di ba? You could just bend it, no? You don't, need, you don't even need, no, to be strong, to break, no? A strand of grass. But sabi dito, a bruised reed, in other words, may lamat na. na you know, parang konting ihip na lang, mat, ma, mababali na yun eh. He will not break. And that is Jesus Christ for you. He is a gentle God. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. O kaya sabi sa Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus announces this. No, he reads from the scroll of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You know, God is, you know, in, in Psalm 34 verse 18, God is close to the brokenhearted. Ganun yung puso niya. That He wants, you know, that, that He accommodates those people who are crushed, that are broken. And he wants to be known as a tower of strength, a tower of refuge. Not for the strong, but for the weak, for the crushed, for the broken. Hmm? That is who God is. This is just a few of God's characteristics and qualities. No, He loves everyone. Desires everyone to be saved. He is a God who is merciful and forgiving. His mercies are new every morning. He is a refuge. You can run to Him. The world can run to Him. And they can feel secure and safe. The weak can go to Him and feel strong and be strengthened. The discouraged can feel courage. And why am I telling, telling you this? Because, again, to the level of our understanding of God is to the level that we can be to this world. The God I know, righteous and holy, the God I know, faithful and true, the God I know, a tower of refuge, the God I know strengthens the weak. And when you understand God, then you become that church. Because that church, I've been song, the church He knows, it's a righteous and holy church, a pure church, unblemished, an uncompromising church. The church He knows, faithful and true. Oh, we Lord, I pray that we will be a church that is faithful and true. Faithful and true. In a world that is filled with unfaithfulness, no, kailangan makita ng mundo na may faithfulness. No, may faithfulness. May, may katapata, no, that we will not trade no, our integrity our, 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 no, for, for some cheap thing.
How do we make known God? First, we have to know Him. Because to the level of you know Him is to the level that we can reveal Him. Secondly, how do we how do we make known God by being salt and light? We have this amazing call. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Let me just remind you. Sabini Jesus, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Well, that is just a powerful thing, no? What is Jesus trying to say? We cannot afford. No? Christian, believer, follower of Christ, we cannot afford that. We cannot afford to lose our saltiness. There's no point in being salt and not being salty in the same way. No, there's no point calling our, ourselves a believer, a Christian, and not showing Christ in His love. How can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything. No, there's no point to living life apart from, from revealing Christ, apart from letting people know that there is a God that can forgive them, that can change their lives, that can set them free. I mean, what, what's the point? Kumita ng pera? Eh, magpakayaman makilala, sumikat no? magkaroon ng anak magraise ng pamilya what is that? at the end of the day, what, what are those things? No, what is salt if it is not salty? what is a Christian if he doesn't show Christ? if doesn't live Christ? Eh, how can it be made salty again? It's good for nothing, sabi ni Jesus. We lose our purpose. No? And so Jesus was reiterating, you are the salt. No? You, make, no? you make Him known by being who you are. A Christian, a believer, a salt of the earth. A salt stops the decay of things. No? Yun nga, pag inasnan mo ang isang bagay, no? napipigilan nito yung pag- pagkabulok nito. No, ano pa nagagawa ng salt? It, it brings out the flavor of something. And then that's what Christians are. No, y- yun nga, Christians, we are not meant to be bland and boring, no? <laughs> I mean, if, if people shy away from us because we tend to be boring people or parang people who doesn't know what, to, what it means to have fun, eh, then, then we are totally misrepresenting God. Christians bring out no, what real joy is. I don't want to be known as someone who's boring, who doesn't know what it means to have fun. Right? We think that being holy has nothing to do with being happy. Right? But do you know that the word blessed means? You know, when when, when the, the psalmist declared, blessed is the man who does not right? walk in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the path of sinners the word in Hebrew for blessed is happy in fact it is what you call double happiness it would be translated literally this way happy, happy is the man you are the salt of the world you are the light of the world a town built on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl no Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. What does that mean? That they may see your good deeds. You know, we have to show our good deeds. No? Not, not because we, we need to prove something to the Lord. No, it is only by grace. But our good deeds show and reflect Christ. That they may glorify the Father in heaven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. The Amplified Version says this. Having such a deep affection for you, we were delighted to share with you not only God's good news, but also our own lives. This is Paul saying, I didn't just only talk about the gospel. I don't, didn't just simply introduce to you a theology of God. But more importantly, that theology is seen in our, 
I didn't only share you the gospel, but our lives as well. No, you know, it's in other words, no, we make known Christ paano in our lives. You are the best no, testimony of the reality of Jesus. Pag hindi makikita sa atin kung wala tayong pinagbago, no, wala kang pinagbago sa classmate mo, sa kaibigan mo, then why would I even believe in you or this God that you prof- profess if there's really no difference in, in your life with theirs? There has to be a difference. There has to be that change. No? We make known, we make Him known by being salt and light. We make known, what does that mean, salt and light? We make known Jesus by our lives and our deeds. No? Yung sabi dito ni Paul, okay? we have shared to you our lives because you had become so dear to us. No? I, Let me quote this thing that I've read. The best evangelism is not the product of a guilty heart or skilled techniques. The best evangelism flows out of a transformed heart wherein Jesus has become Lord. You cannot make known what or who you do not know. Third, we make known by sharing the good news. Hey, hindi lang pwedeng no, totoo totoo yung ano that that uh, what's this uh, no our our walk is better than our talk that's true that's why we need to show it in our lives in our deeds but it does not negate the fact that this gospel is to be proclaimed this gospel is to be shared you have to tell it we have to let people know about it no i mean you can be the kindest, no, goodest person in the world. But that's it up until you actually tell them that the reason for your being kind and the reason for your being good is because of Jesus. You have still have to tell it. You cannot just simply have a good life, a nice life, no, a kind. You cannot just be a kind person. Totoo, you have to be one. And then that is connected to what? No? to telling people that hey the reason I am this the reason I am different the reason I am kind the reason I am doing good is because of Christ in other words this gospel this good news no this God is to be made known by sharing and speaking and telling people about Him Romans chapter 10 verse 8 to 9 no and 13 to 15 okay, let me read from the NIV version but what does it say the word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning the faith that we proclaim, sabi ni Paul. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe with your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So this is, this is the gospel. This is what, what, what Jesus, what, 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 what Paul, he was explaining. No? The gospel, sabi niya, if people believe, in the resurrected Christ, in the power of His resurrection. No? If they declare that He is Lord, in other words, when you declare that God is master over my life, right? then, then that person is saved. That person is saved. When he surrenders his life to Jesus, no? and makes Jesus Lord over his life, that person is saved. But then, Paul shifts, sabi bigla ni Paul dito. Look at verse 14. I want you to look at verse 14. But how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Hey, church, did you see that? Unless you tell their friends, they're not going to find out. An angel's not going to appear to them and then tell them that they need Jesus. You are the best person to tell them about this Christ that you have experienced in your life. 
And you tell your friends, you tell your family, you tell your neighbors, you tell your classmates. Sabi dito ni Paul Linaw, no? unless somebody tells them, unless somebody preaches to them, okay, how can they hear? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? And sabi dito, no? as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. I just like the thought of that. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Just, I don't know, that, that, that just appeals to me like, I, I want to have beautiful feet, God. And beautiful feet are not, you know, are not the feet being treated sa spa. In the first place, you know, yung nausos pa ngayon. <laughs> Covid ka pa. You want to have beautiful feet? Tell someone about Jesus. Make Him known. No, for all you know, you just have to invite your classmate. You've never invited him before. You've never invited your boss. Yeah, he knows you're a Christian, but have you ever actually invited him? Did you ever really like, no, sir, hey, just watch this link. Sir, why don't you join us for an online service? Besh, check moto. You'll be surprised that so many people just want, just needed to be told. If only they'd be given an opportunity. Paul, you can feel Paul says, I mean, how will they know? Unless someone tells them. We make known, we make him known by telling others about him, telling others about God. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but you no, sabi dito, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession as our soul. You can show others the goodness of God for He has called you out of darkness into His wonderful, wonderful light. No? In some translations, sabi dito, to proclaim the wonderful acts of God. What does it mean to proclaim? To declare, to speak forth. No, this God is to be spoken of. In, in our anniversary on, on March as we celebrate our 23rd anniversary yung theme natin is about being the voice crying out in the wilderness the same way like John the Baptist prepared and ushered in you know, the first advent the coming of Jesus Christ sabi natin no? uh, uh, padating na no? there's a possibility yung, yung, the thought of the, the second coming but it's not something to be frightened of no? yung, yung call ng church is to, uh, to be the voice that prepares to proclaim you are that voice. You are not just to be a light. You're not just to be salt. You are to be a voice. A voice that should be heard. And finally, my fourth and final point. How do we make him known? Sum up Kumuna Ulet, we make him known to the level that we know him. That's why we have to keep on pursuing and knowing him. By knowing him, your your character is transformed, your life is transformed. And thus you can you can manifest that. You can make him known by being salt and light, by showing your good deeds. By showing your life. Third, you make him known by literally telling others about him, proclaiming this gospel. The gospel means the good news. The good news that Christ has come to forgive sins. That people can change. That people can come to a repentance, a change of heart. In the fourth and final, you know, John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. So I'm now giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. Look at verse 35. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. What does that mean? What is the final way how we can reveal Christ to the world? How can, how can we make known this God that we know? 
not just individually, not just on a personal quest of making God known. Apparently, this has something to do with being part of a church, being part of a loving community. Okay? This love, that Je- when Jesus said, love each other, He was not telling us to love the world. Okay? That would come later on. What He's saying is, love one another. Be part of this community of love. Know that that as you love each other, you know, love each other the way I have loved you. And and many Jesus, and this will prove to the world, this will testify to the world that you are indeed my disciples. Somehow, this this, and I think that is one of the greatest challenges, you know, for the church for us. Because let's face it, sometimes counting. Disagreements lang. Tampo na. No, we can't even agree on no, the people that we're gonna vote for. And somehow, for us, that's, that's enough cause for us to separate ways and mapagsabihan mo lang ng konti about something. No, no, no. And that's why maybe, maybe, yun nga eh, yung isang hindi masagot, honestly, you know, an, a, a very good question. One time, my, my brother-in-law, he's a Christian, huh? but, but somehow, it's a valid question. Sabi niya, bakit? Bakit ang daming denominations? Honestly, I don't even have a, a really good answer for that. Somehow God allows it. But what I know is this. I, I, I don't have an answer for that question. Bakit marami? But what I know is this. We are commanded to love each other this love in the church what kind of love a love that's willing to die for each other there's no greater love than this than for a man to lay down his life for his friends and I think you know, that love is all the more best seen during times of trial during times of pandemic yung covenant love yung love na walang iwanan, tulungan. And that's why for tonight, no, as I have established clearly with you the scriptures, that it is of greatest importance for us to know Him. There is no escaping this. We are to know Him and we are to make Him known. And as I have revealed to you God's heart for the lost in the world. That He's a God who loves the world, who doesn't want anyone to perish, but all men come to the knowledge of salvation. In as much as I've shown to you that Jesus told us that you are the salt and light of this world, to be that salt, be that light. Oh my goodness, in this world of darkness, makiki 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 sausaw pa ba tayo dun sa darkness sa confusion ng mundo makiki sausaw pa ba tayo dun sa no eh, eh makiki halo pa ba tayo sa komentaryo ng ang dami ng komentaryo so we just need to be light at mo but 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 also we need to love And so I would like to challenge you, every one of you, as you have recommitted your life to the Lord in the last couple of nights, and so everything back, can I also challenge you to recommit your life to the church? Why? Because this church is the church 
that Jesus died for. And we are being commanded to love each other. We need each other and we need to show that love. And so I would like to and I add more. What do you mean? What, what do I mean by challenge you to recommit? By serving the church, serving God's people. A lot of us may do nagpahinga in this pandemic. No? We stop as a result of the pandemic, we stop doing our ministries. But you know what I'm no. Whether whether this quarantine or this lockdown continues or ends. I think we should we should never stop being a community of people serving one another and helping each other and reaching out to each other kinakamustang isa't isa and serving each other I want you to recommit once again to, to, to your ministries whether that be in security or in the multimedia part of the worship team or the GRS I want you to see yourself just telling the Lord Lord I'm ready I'm ready to make you known as part of your church let us be that church let us be the church, the church that God knows. We just worship the Lord as we, as we deal with our hearts and, and just recommit our lives. Go ahead, recommit it. Just even personally right now, from your homes, tell the Lord, 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 I'm, I'm coming back. I'm, I'm, I'm signing up again. Lord, I'm signing up. I'm signing up. I'm signing up in your church. I'm signing up, Lord God, for your kingdom. I'm signing up, Lord God. As a soldier of Christ, I'm signing up, Lord. I want to be that church, Lord God. I want to be part of that church. A church that we be, that will be light to the world. A church that will give love. A church that would reach out, Lord God. A church that will be compassionate, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. If we have, if we have become insensitive, if we have become... Lord God, not compassionate to people, Lord God. And then I'd also like to ask, as, as the senior pastor, you know, if, if you've been hurt in any way by our church, by me, by anyone in the leadership, I humbly ask your forgiveness. No, we're, we're not perfect. We are still under the grace of God. But I want you to know uh, this. This I could say that, that I love. I love you. And let's grow in this love together in the Lord. Let's show the world what it means to live that Christ life. This is worship the Lord.
the church he knows a tower of refuge hearts are healed Christ revealed the church he is almost set. I will, I'm, I'm, I'm not the kind of a person that would predict about Christ's second coming. No. In fact, the only thing that I know is He will come whether, whether it's near or you know, it's going to be decades later on or even centuries. You know. The Bible says that we couldn't you know, really find out so let's not even try to find out but in a way you know, As year passes by, that that end is getting near. And and you know this this global thing, this global pandemic, you know, it almost sets the stage already for that. Things are not. You know, I don't think that things are gonna get better. Things might even get worse. Okay? The Bible says there's gonna be wars and rumors of wars. There's gonna be all these kinds of things that's gonna be happening. And, and that's why all the more, you know, ito yun, you know, if the church is not, is not going to be the beacon of light or the beacon of hope, if we're not going to be the tower of refuge, if we're not going to be a, a strength for the weak, then, then, then what are we? And that's why I want to challenge you, you know, to, to tighten ranks once again and, and then affirm, let's affirm this covenant with one another. Jesus is coming. He is coming. And let's prepare the bride. Let's prepare the bride. Let, let's win people. Let's win our friends. Let's win our families for the Lord. They, they need Jesus. They need, you need to understand, your, your classmates need Jesus. Your friends need Jesus. Your boss needs Jesus. Our nation needs Jesus. And somehow the way that God wants His name to be known, to be revealed, is through His church. It's through us. It's going to be a concerted effort. It's through the church that is loving and, and, and affirming their covenant and serving in humility, reflecting Christ's love and Christ's life. That's, that's the way it's going to be. That's the way God planned it to be. And let's all get on board. No, no. And so tonight, that's, that's what I, I would like to end with. 
with sharing a covenant meal, affirming, first of all, remembering what Christ has done for us. But also affirming, I want to affirm my covenant with you. you know, if, if you receive the link uh, for Zoom, you can join us for Zoom right now so that we can just also have a group thing going on. Get your communion elements, no? Okay. Get get bread. Get some uh, biscuits, some sky flakes. No? Get some grape juice or, or wine or, or okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll give you a couple more minutes, no? For those of you who, are, who just received the Zoom link, you can join us as a Zoom as well. said, do this to remember me, you know, to declare, to remember the Lord, you know, and to declare the Lord's death and resurrection until He comes back. In other words, you know, you're not, you're never to forget, you're never, for, never to forget, but also it is an affirmation of covenant. When Jesus said, when Jesus broke the bread, saying, this is my body. No, he was actually offering his life for the church. And as we do this tonight, let that piece of bread not only represent what Jesus has done for you, let it not only be a reminder of what Jesus has given you, that salvation, that grace that you don't deserve, that we don't deserve, but let it also be a symbol of you. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, love one another just as I have loved you. In other words, in the same way that he has offered his life. No. Let it be that that bread is a symbol of you. Offering your life to the church. Offering our lives to one another. In whatever service that we can render with our talents, with our abilities, with our finances. And let's affirm our love, our covenant, no, all, no, with, with all the different satellites. No? Well, one, one good thing that really came out of, of this uh, pandemic is no, the Lord really allowed us to collaborate and connect with each one. No? Yung SODs, yung, uh, yung uh, worship team, no? yung mga pastors. No? And, and, and I'd, like, I'd like to... I'd like to affirm that covenant. I'm covenanted with every one of you there. The night Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body. I'm giving to you. this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of that bread. At the same time, it is a symbol of you telling me, telling everyone in this church, this is my life. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. I'm renewing covenant with you. Partake of that bread right now. After supper, Jesus took the cup. This is, this is the blood. This is my blood of the new covenant. drink it. Paul said, as often as you eat this bread and 
drink this cup, you remember the Lord's death and resurrection until He comes. What does that mean? This covenant is for a lifetime. It's a covenant that extends all the way to the second coming. It's a covenant for life. It's a covenant for eternity. Let's drink this cup. I'm covenanted with you for life. Right now, if, if you made that commitment of serving the church again, I want you to tell somebody, or message somebody right now. I want you to go ahead. You know, go, to, go to somebody, a friend in the church, your cell leader, your cellmate. Just tell someone. Tell, 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 a few, tell, tell as many people as you want to tell them. Tell your pastors, I'm covenanted with you for life. I'm covenanted with the Lord. I'm renewing my commitment. I'm going to know Him and make Him known. That is who we are. That is our identity destiny. To know Christ. Make him know. Go ahead, tell somebody that. Tell somebody that. Text somebody that. Message somebody that. Be accountable. Just be accountable right now. Tell them I'm I'm coming back. I'm working. I'm 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 gonna tell the lo- the world of God's love.
translate that no, in a more siguro, tangible or practical sense. Okay. You know, willing, you know, part of that is we're willing to be discipled. In other words, we're willing to be corrected. I'm willing to be discipled. I'm willing to be corrected. You know? uh, I'm accountable to other pastors. They can tell me okay, if there's something that I need to change in my life. I I'm, I'm accountable. Right? And, and what that means is, you know, if I'm corrected, I'm gonna stay. I'm not gonna be like, tatampo. Can you imagine kung kinorek ka na asawa mo, tapos nagtampo ka, tapos ayaw mo na sa kanya? No, that, no? And, and we need to understand, no? marriage is a covenant, and, and church is a covenant. Okay, so, walang ganon, walang, walang, Okay, translate ko mas malina. Okay. Walang ipatan ng church. Come on, guys. Come on. I mean, I mean, sometimes for petty things. Really? Really? Is that the church of God? It's just the church of Christ? Are, are, Here's what's funny, no? Why is it that members think that they can go to another church? Sana pwede rin pastor, maglipat nga ibang church. <laughs> you know, I can imagine, if, that, that would be crazy. Like, if the pastors, no, pwede magtampot, lumipat na ibang church. Ayoko sa inyo, pastor na ako ibang church. Pero hindi, hindi, no? I mean, it's a covenant. No? I'm not promising that we're going to perfect. I'm not promising even that we're not going to hurt each other. But, but here's what I know. We're not trying to. We're not trying to. We're not intentionally hurting each other. No. But just the same way as a family. There misunderstandings, there conflicts. What do you do? You work that out. You fix that. You know, when someone falls, you, know, you, you pick them up and help them recover. You don't... You don't push them away, you don't condemn them, no, no. That's what the church of God is. Okay? And let's, no, let it be that we affirm that. We love each other, we help each other. Hey okay, guys, walang lipatan. And I'm telling you right now, I can tell you, even if, for example, you're from another church and you were heard in that church okay, and you're thinking of yeah, coming here in destiny. Come on, no, no, just go back. You know, I mean, fix that, fix your relationship. Go back to your church, help your pastor, please, please. You know, the last thing I want is, oh, I don't want that happening to me. I don't want people leave, leave. in the same way. I don't want you no know, other people leaving their pastors because of some petty stuff. Right. Geographically speaking, kunyari, talagang hindi ka na pwede doon. Yun, mas okay pa sa akin yun. Eh. Pero yung mga petty, yung nagtampo, na, no, may issues. No. No, geographically speaking, lumipat ka na ng ano, mas nandito ka sa place na to. Hindi ka na talaga technically maka-join doon. Then good and well. No, pero if, if you're if, if you're simply transferring for you know, I mean, some convenience, not even physical convenience, but you know, come on, go, ba- go back to your church. Go back. Help your pastor. Okay? You know, help your pastor win, you know, win the, 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 
the town, the city that God has called them to win. Right? And, and for those of you here with us, you've been saved here, you've, you've grown here. Let's win the world. Amen? Okay. Walang lipatan. No, no, no. Jesus didn't quit on you. He didn't quit on the church. That's the Jesus that I know. He's not a quitter. So then, let's not quit on each other. Pandemic or no pandemic. Amen? Let's work. Let's start work. It's gonna be, there's going to be a great work. There's going to be a great harvest or, no, for 2021. No, the Bible says that no, part of the last days is no, that there's, no, there's going to be the greatest harvest as well. Okay? So let's be ready for that. No, yun nga, all the more that there's darkness, that the church needs to be that light. You are that light. You are that salt. No, and then let's no, make of opportunities. Okay? How we can no, talk about Jesus. Get married, no. What does that even mean? Get married and no, invite your friends to your marriage. Okay? They're gonna hear the good news in your in your marriage. No, like, no for real. Okay? No, that that's one of the ways that I I I, I do when when people you know, when people ask me to officiate their weddings. No, it's it's a celebration of you no know, a testimony of God's goodness. So that's one way, get married. <laughs> no. okay. let's, let's find ways no, to serve the Lord. Amen. God bless everyone. No, thank you for joining us for the week of fire. Okay, have a great night. You're watching Destiny Church. If you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or log on to www.destinychurch.ph slash give.